This is Twit. Interesting piece of news that I got a lot of uh, Twitter traffic about, which was a crypto weakness that was discovered in smart LED light bulbs. <laughs> um, this was, uh, it, it launched itself as a Kickstarter project, massively popular. I don't, I didn't write down what the numbers were, but I remember reading that, you know, they like raised way more than 10 times as much as they were looking for. It was like LIFX, I think is the, I, I can't remember even the name of the light bulb. And for me, it really doesn't matter because I don't mean to pound on these guys. The, the nice thing is they responded very quickly to this. But this is, I think, a really useful cautionary tale about what's happening with the Internet of Things. And it connects back to why I was very glad in in Apple's announcement uh, recently that they're getting into the home automation market because I trust Apple to do this right. Apple will not make stupid mistakes. They, they're, they're, even their first release will not have problems like this did. And, and I'm, you know, there are a couple takeaways from this, but so, so here's the story. Um, it's a very cool concept. The idea was that these, the, these would be LED screw-in light bulbs, you know, and Leo's talked about them where you can you know, change the color temperature and, and so forth. And they would be in a mesh network. So the light bulbs, if you like have them many in the same room or scattered around your house, they would be talking to each other. So, for example, light bulbs far away from your router don't have to have a direct connection to your router. They can talk to the next nearest light bulb that'll talk to the next nearest one, to the next nearest one, to the next, essentially forming a chain in order to all be connected together. But one, and, and again, they talked about how easy this is to set up. Anytime something is really easy to set up, you have to ask yourself, okay, how is it working? How is it that I can screw in new light bulbs and they're just on the Wi-Fi network? How did that, how did that magic happen? I can tell because, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, because if it's too easy, then you've got to wonder about the security. So what the engineers did was, or some hackers, some hackers took some of these apart and they found the the standard debugging pins the so-called jtag pins which allows access to the memory they found the pins on the processors in the smart light bulbs dumped out the the memory reverse engineered the the microcode and found a static AES key. Now, I'm sure in the, oh, we're, you know, we've got military grade security nonsense that was part of this. They were saying, you know, AES 256 bit encryption, military grade. You know, we see this all the time in systems that are not secure. The problem was they burned the fixed static AES key into the firmware. Oh. The same one in every light bulb. So the instant the engineers, the hackers, saw this, they were able to decrypt the traffic moving between the light bulbs, and that exposed the user's Wi-Fi password. So the Wi-Fi password was encrypted beautifully, but using a fixed known key. Now, the danger is a bad guy knowing this could stand outside your house and easily participate in the mesh. And with any, you know, the moment there's traffic between the light bulbs, decrypt it and the user's Wi-Fi password will be there. So this was the problem. Um, to Again, to this company's credit, they immediately strengthened their security so that it wasn't this bad. 
But this is the problem. I guess, you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking, you know, one of the things here is that as far as I know, there isn't like an RFC establishing a secure protocol for this kind of application. You know, we've got all these secure protocols for doing all the kinds of common things we want. Well, this is still uncommon. And what we need is, is security people to establish a protocol for how to do this securely. And then other companies can simply adopt that protocol. And as, as we do, you know, as all the companies do who are on the internet now, we're, they're using well-established, very secure, bull, you know, pounded on bulletproof protocols. But we don't have anything like that for the internet of things. And so companies like this are just making stuff up. And they're saying, well, you know, we're going to solve the problem because there is no RFC yet for it. Well, you know, we need one. And this is just an example of security through obscurity. They figured, well, yeah, yep. okay, we're using a static key, but we're going to bake it into a chip that no one will have access to. And they won't be able to read it, and it will be fine. And any security expert worth his salt would have sat next to them and said, you know you can't ever assume that anything you bake into an IC is going to stay hidden. You know that, right? Right. Uh, and and it's, this, this is easier to hack than, remember WEP, like WEP64, WEP128, that, that oh, yeah. you know, all you would have to do is send enough packets where you could decipher what the key was. This is even simpler. Once you decipher what any of the keys, once you figure out what that static is, any packet, you could figure out what the key is because you've got the cipher key. Yep. Whoa. Oh, I think we should design all our security like that. Yeah, well, and notice that this was easy for them to do. It, I mean, AES, you can get off the shelf code for that cipher. So this was trivial for them to do. All they had to do, well, you know, I mean, solving this securely would be tough when you have access to the, um, uh, the microcode in the chip. Because I was going to say, you know, if, if you did an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman exchange, so you're dynamically establishing a key, the problem is if you know, if you're able to spoof being a light bulb then and a new light bulb entering the mesh is going to receive the wi-fi network's password then i don't see how you convincingly protect this so um so i, I mentioned some takeaways the takeaways are it is it is imperative in my opinion that your your Internet of Things devices be on their own network, their own Wi-Fi network. We're now seeing routers that have a so you know a so-called guest network feature, and if yours doesn't, get a second router um, and set it up with its own with, with its own password um, that your hardware devices can talk to. My my point is, I just don't think it's safe at this point. Uh, we're, we're like in the, you know, the Wild West where, you know, you're going to get arrows in your back. Um, you just, you don't want hardware. I mean, like, you know, Nest and Insteon and, and everyone wants to be on Wi-Fi now. Give that stuff its own network. Routers are no longer expensive. As, as, as we mentioned, they're, they're now commonly having uh, multiple passwords Keep that stuff off of your internal network. They're, they're, if unless people do that, and I mean the people here in the pod, this podcast probably will. Most people won't. They'll have one network. They'll screw the light bulbs in, and <laughs> and, and they'll and be then the, and the light bulbs will screw up their network. That's... I was just gonna. I was tripping. <laughs> you were over going that there. I saw that. I, in your I was eyes. going there, and I said, uh, uh, "Do I want to say that they'll be screwed?" I, I, I have no problems with saying things that will get me fired. It's cool. Don't worry about it.